Everything is in motion. Everything vibrates. Nothing is at rest. That which doesn't move does not exist. Even in the watered-down science classes of today, we are taught the three types of movement matter can engage in. Translation, or moving to another location. Rotation, in the same place. And vibration. Gases translate, rotate, and vibrate. Liquids rotate and vibrate. Solids, being the most crystallized form of existence, simply vibrate. But think about that for a moment. Literally all matter, including the chair you are sitting in, is vibrating, is moving. This principle explains that the differences between different manifestations of matter, energy, and mind, and even spirit, result largely from varying rates of vibration. From the all, which is pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. Not just matter, but all forms of energy have a vibratory rate, including thought forms, and as previously stated, etheric entities and planes. Heat, for example, is just a rate of vibration. Think about it, a high rate of vibration of this energy results in warmth, while a lower rate manifests cold. These are but different vibrations of the same form of energy, providing evidence to the idea that all things are related and of the same source. Likewise, certain thoughts have vibrations as well. Like previously stated, the closer existence gets to the source, or the all, the higher the rate of vibration. Thoughts that are noble more closely resemble the vibration of the source, while thoughts that are profane and lack good intent are further away from the vibration of the source. You may recall times when you're experiencing something very pleasant and notice that you feel warmer. Your vibration has been raised to be closer to the source. You may also recall a time where something traumatic happens. You remember feeling cold. This is why people sometimes refer to individuals as being cold. They don't mean that they are physically cold, but their actions and presence are not pleasant. Interestingly enough, however, the cold individual can physically make other people feel cold, drawing on what was said before. We also sometimes say that we get a bad vibe from something. What they don't realize is what they're saying is that this person, place, or thing does not represent the energy of the source and is drawing your vibration away from it, therefore lowering it. This plays on the ancient hermetic understanding, and few realize it. Thinking back on the previous video in the series, we learned that the universe is fundamentally mental. Everything we see is a projection of our perception of the world. We learned that we can create that which we wish to see with our minds. With the principle of vibration in mind, we can expand upon this. Again, thoughts have vibratory rates of motion, and thoughts project into your reality, thus becoming your reality. Putting the two together, the vibratory rate of your thoughts will reflect the vibratory rate of your surrounding reality. This also relates to the principle of correspondence, which we will get into later in the video. If you want to have pleasant experiences that draw you to the source while embodied and after death, you must be pure in thought. Your thoughts must be projecting out with a high vibratory rate. This will bring positive experiences to you while you're embodied and raise the vibration of your whole being. The opposite can also be true, and you can end up creating a hell for yourself. Again, we must be in control of our own thoughts. If we let the mass media and other outlets put negative thoughts in our heads, we end up projecting those low vibratory thoughts out and create negative experiences for ourselves and also lower our vibration. Everything is mind, and everything vibrates. Do not allow yourself to be programmed. Your insight is all you need. You have woken yourself up. This video even is a projection of your own mind. You wanted to learn about Hermeticism, and here you are. I'm just a messenger. You created this video. Your thoughts about wanting to know the nature of reality had a certain vibration, and my video had a similar vibration, resulting in you manifesting the video and me actually getting the desire and the urge to make it. 
As above, so below. As below, so above. The grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secret of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would be otherwise unknowable to us. For the purpose of convenience of thought, the Hermetic philosophy considers that the universe may be divided into three great classes of phenomenon known as the three great planes, namely, the great physical, the great mental, and the great spiritual. Physical, of course, being the vessels containing the spirit. Um, you know, you are not your body. Your body is just a vessel. Then you have the mental plane, which you can think of as the soul or the astral, where the thought forms are projected. And then you have the spiritual plane, which is the plane leading up to the source. The primary example the Kabbalion gives to the principle of correspondence is with regards to the mineral plane. As a brief side note, when spirit descends into matter, it first occupies a vessel in a mineral state, then a vegetable or plant state, an animal vessel, and then finally becomes human. So before incarnating in the human form, you had experiences in different minerals, plants, and animals. They are necessary steps on the cycle of necessity. With this in mind, let us reinforce that minerals do have a soul tied to them, and they are having an experience, albeit a very crystallized one. The average mind does not generally attribute the possession of mind, soul, or life to the mineral kingdom, but all occultists recognize the existence of the same, and modern science is rapidly moving forward to the point of view of the hermetic in this respect. The molecules and atoms have their loves and hates, likes and dislikes, attractions and repulsions, affinities and non-affinities, etc. Certain elements bond nicely with others, while other elements react violently. So, as below, so above. The soul that attaches to a certain mineral state chooses the mineral form that is best suited for that soul's personality and experiences its attractions and repulsions. Just as in the plant kingdom, plants having their tendencies to prefer different amounts of sunlight or water, animals preferring certain types of food, and humans especially having particular preferences regarding everything. But I think the most important correspondence that this principle shows is the relationship between astrology, physical, and spiritual existence. The topic I will bring up here is much too broad to be in this video, so I will be brief. From the creation of all spiritual forms, from the all that is, all the way down to the lowest physical forms in the mineral state, and back again to the source, are each periods in the cycle of necessity. Each period is represented by a sign of the zodiac. Aries represents the period that you can call the Big Bang, when the infinite became self-aware. It always has and always was aware, but this is just our way of conceptualizing it. It was considered to be the first cosmic thought, the first iteration of self-awareness, of I am. Aries rules the brain, the head, which couldn't be more fitting, as above. The period where first cosmic thought took place is represented by Aries, so below, the part of the body where your consciousness exists and how your own thoughts are generated. The head is also ruled by Aries. Not to mention that people who were born while the sun was in this sign have a similar personality. Again, Aries represents the period of the first cosmic thought. The energy of this period is masculine and proactive. It takes an initiative just as people who are Aryans are very proactive and driven individuals, often taking initiatives. This just scratches the surface of the profound truth of astrological correspondence. We also see a correspondence with certain aspects of the physical body. Just for a quick and dirty example, Saturn is the furthest planet of the primary seven from the Sun. Being further away, it moves slowly. As far as diseases go, Saturn is understood by all astrologers to influence illnesses that develop over many years, like arthritis. 
Arthritis, like Saturn, moves slowly. And when Saturn is in a sign that is unfavorable for it in your birth chart, like Leo, for example, you will likely be more at risk for slow developing diseases like arthritis. So we see the correspondence. As above, so below. As in the heavens, so on the earth and in the human body.